Our first security assessment strategy is malware sandboxing. Basically, we're going to analyze code by forcing it to run in a computer-based virtual machine system and analyze it for its attributes and traits, indicating malware. It's a popular method used by most vendors to recognize zero-day malware and stealth attacks. Malware creators and hackers, they're quite mindful of the sandboxing techniques that go on with either next generation firewalls or private virtual environments or even with your vendors. So they're constantly fighting to stay ahead of the curve. Here's an example of Secular's Elastic Sandbox, which is a great example of a sandbox solution. Let's go through the steps here together. First, customers, partners, vendors, and the malware experts at Seculart, they're going to upload suspicious executables to the Elastic Sandbox. They use an online platform or API. Second, in the Elastic Sandbox, Seculart studies the behavior of the code including network communications, metadata in the network traffic, and host runtime modifications. In step three, you can tune the sandbox by setting the execution time and region to approximate geographic targeted attacks. Four, if additional suspicious code is found during execution, it too is downloaded and sent to the Elastic Sandbox for analysis. In step five, Secular uses big data analytics to process all of the information collected and determine whether or not the code is malicious. If the software recognizes a known malware profile, it will update its customers from the cloud and its partners immediately through an online dashboard and the Secular API, which communicates directly with customers' proxies and firewalls to further block known threats. In step six, if the executable's behavior is not known, but it's conclusively identified as malware, then a profile is defined. Secular immediately notifies customers and partners through the dashboard and API. In addition, the new malware profile becomes an important learning set for Secular's machine learning algorithm and traffic log analysis. In step seven, if the malware is determined to be a botnet, the data is also passed on to the botnet interception module, which monitors traffic and identifies users and IP addresses. Realize this secular solution is much like many other solutions out there. FireEye, Trend Micro, Palo Alto with its wildfire service, Cisco with its advanced malware protection for networks, part of the firepower acquisition. Take a look at this diagram. This is sandboxing as part of a larger solution from Symantec. So you can see on the left-hand side, we have the proxy SMG looking at different files, for example, jar files, EXE files, with its built-in web and mail threat protection. And that gets passed on to the content analysis from Symantec. Hash reputation, dual anti-malware, antivirus, using Symantec, Sophos, or McAfee also predictive file analysis, and dynamic sandboxing. Bottom line, Symantec uses multi-layer threat inspection, detection, and sandboxing. Let's look at memory dumps and runtime debugging. Runtime debuggers help vendors and application developers locate and fix bugs and security holes in programs. It allows developers to write secure code and enable system admins to customize the permissions granted to code to better protect resources. For example, the .NET framework offers useful classes and services that facilitate crypto systems and role-based security. Many developers will use unified modeling language, UML tools, to reverse engineer memory dumps and debugs. Another great tool is Process Monitor from Windows, and ProcMon has really evolved and has been evolving with some great improvements, advanced filters, and additional methods. Now, once you download and run the ProcMon.exe tool, it'll immediately start capturing file system, registry, and process and thread activities. Process Monitor has some powerful monitoring and filtering capabilities, 
It can get more data captured for operation input and output parameters. Non-destructive filters that allow you to set filters without losing any data. You can also capture thread stacks for each operation, so it makes it possible to find the root cause of operations. It also provides reliable capture of process details, including the image path, the command line, user, and session ID. It also has configurable and movable columns for any event property, and the filters can be set for any data field, including fields not configured as columns. And the best part, it has advanced logging architecture that scales to tens of millions of captured events. So Process Monitor, or ProcMon, is a great tool to output to other SIEM systems or other cloud-based behavioral analysis or analysis systems on the cloud. Let's talk about reconnaissance and fingerprinting. Reconnaissance is the process of information gathering, and it's usually done early on in the life cycle of an advanced persistent threat. Fingerprinting or footprinting is identifying network attributes, hosts, operating systems, running services and applications. In footprinting, the attacker may utilize who is. It may use NS lookup or other advanced lookup tools for DNS. It can use trace route, enumerators, uh, echo request, echo reply, uh, a wide variety of social engineering mechanisms and other tools to ascertain information about the network, like looking for key personnel, looking for the topology, the protocols used, are you using IDS or IPS and what's the platform, okay? The IP addresses of machines in the network, ports, file shares, and services that are vulnerable. It may involve internal or external reconnaissance teams. In fingerprinting, the attacker will direct specially crafted packets at the target, which will elicit a signature response from the device. The response will tell the attacker what OS, what service, what version, and more. As a result, the attacker is able to fine tune their assault. Reconnaissance and fingerprinting can be active or passive. When the fingerprinting is passive, the attacker is monitoring for traffic that's occurring between the device and other nodes. When it's active fingerprinting, the attacker is sending uniquely constructed packets to the device and monitoring the response. And there's numerous free and commercial tools out there. Fingerprinting can be countermeasured by using scrubbers, which will normalize packets, remove unique identifying traits that the attacker is seeing. Now, there's also personality strategies, such as the use of IP personality, which will alter packets and cause responses from the device to, to appear as if it's another device, okay? Additionally, firewalls can be deployed to block traffic with abnormal combinations of IPs and ports. Real quickly, I want to do a kind of a list of social engineering attacks or ways that attackers can gather information through social engineering. Obviously, they can make phone calls, phone calls to uh, people at the front desk, okay? Maybe you're a receptionist and they can trick those people into getting information. They can make phone calls and they can pretend to be an administrator or a database administrator. They can also use SMS texting to try to fake people out to get information, like IP addressing, or maybe they get to get the name of the CEO or the CIO. They can do email phishing campaigns and whaling campaigns against your C-suite or your C-team. They can hack DNS, either the host file on end systems or DNS servers to redirect to fake websites through farming attacks. They can also target people that are members of groups or members of societies or clubs that go to the same sites on the internet and conduct watering hole attacks. They can compromise one of those users. They can try to compromise all of them by sending an email to those users and they're just faking that they're part of the group or part of the society. They can do various hoaxes, okay? They can dress up as pest control people. They can show up and they can lie about their duties there. They can say they're auditors or investigators. They can fake being law enforcement. They can do shoulder surfing. It's very easy to shoulder surf now with your cell phone. Just simply have the camera going and walk behind somebody and you can get what's on their screen or what they're typing on their keyboard. And that's another key area of security to be aware of is using cameras on phones. 
you should have MDM device management that disables cameras on provisioned phones. And of course, good old fashioned dumpster diving, which is simply going into the dumpsters and just pulling out stuff that hasn't been shredded and trying to derive information. These are all some very common ways to perform social engineering. Code review is probably the single most effective technique for identifying security flaws. When it's used in concert with automated tools and manual pen testing, code review can significantly increase the cost effectiveness of an application security verification effort. Security code review is the process of auditing the source code for an application to verify that the proper security controls are there, that they work as intended, that they've been invoked in all the right places. Code review is a way to ensure that the application's been developed to be self-defending in given environments. Security code review is a method of assuring secure application developers are following secure development techniques. And a general rule of thumb is that a pen test shouldn't discover any additional application vulnerabilities relating to the developed code after the application has undergone a proper security code review. Manual security code review provides insight into the real risk associated with insecure code. This is the most This is the single most important value from the manual approach. Pivoting is a unique technique of using an instance, also referred to as a plant or a foothold, to be able to move around inside the network. Basically, you're using your initial compromise to allow and even aid in the compromise of other inaccessible systems. Lateral systems, we call this east-west pivoting, or if we're doing privilege escalation, we're gonna be calling that north-south. So in a certain scenario, we could use this for routing traffic from a normally non-routable network onto a routed network. Metasploit Meterpreter is a common exploit tool to accomplish a pivot attack.